Hello and welcome to Money Life. This is Sucheta Dilal. This week I'm talking about how brokers continue to rip off investors despite all the SEBI rules that are supposed to prevent it. Today's story, actually two stories, is about how they have targeted super senior citizens. Frankly, it is so chilling that with all my cynicism after 35 years of investigative journalism, this was still a surprise. So let's start at the beginning. The pandemic, March 2020, was a flourishing time for the brokerage industry. In fact, India's investor population has doubled in the past two and a half years. And there have been online classes all over the place seeming to suggest that anyone from the age of 9 to 90 can turn into traders after a quick few lessons. Now, brokers have used this boom and the lockdown to lure a lot of people into the market. Some have been young, smart yuppies who probably trained themselves, but they have also used this and we are discovering it slowly, bit by bit, to lure people to put money into portfolio management schemes that were not PMS or not with SEBI regulation. And in this case that I'm talking about today, to trade on their individual accounts. In fact, the two stories should be a lesson to everybody to watch out for what is going on in their families. So we know that SEBI has been working at multiple regulations because brokers cheating investors is rampant. We've had so many broker defaults. Even before 2020, after which, remember, from November 2019 and mainly after March 2020, there have been 30 odd broker defaults on the National Stock Exchange. SEBI has been trying to tighten the rules since 2016. It has multiple circulars to tighten compliance, reporting requirements. In 2018, it came up with rules to prevent unauthorized trading by brokers. They make them give back your securities and money after a certain interval so that that money doesn't vanish. And yet, it appears that things are not changing. Of course, the National Stock Exchange has apparently been saying all the defaults are part of a cleanup. But listen to these two stories and tell me what you think. The first case, now what I've done here in both these cases is I've changed the names in order to protect the privacy of these people. In the process, I have not even named the brokers because personally, I think it's a job for SEBI to investigate and act on it. So the stories are important because they are a lesson. So the first case is 82 year old Pestanji. In a modest portfolio, like many Parsi families, lots of shares, he was contacted by a smooth-talking broker employee called Mohandas. I'm going to call him Mohandas. He persuaded him to open a trading account. After chatting him up, he must have realized that he has a lot of junk shares like everybody does. Lots of senior citizens and super senior citizens still sitting on paper shares which have not been converted. So he told him set up a portfolio, not a portfolio, set up a trading account. I will help you get rid of your junk shares buy good ones, will clean up your lifetime portfolio. Since he was so smooth, obviously, Mr. Pestinji believed him, opened a trading account, in fact, believed him enough to actually sign whatever papers he told him because he thought Mohandas was this godsend who was going to give him a nest egg. Few days later, he woke up to the fact that all is not well and he wanted to verify the forms. Mohandas, smooth talking as ever, told him, oh, you know, I forwarded them to Delhi and I don't have a copy. In any case, Pestinji was very trusting, so he had no reason to suspect foul play. From then on, Mohandas began to tutor Pestinji to place derivative trades. Forget about cleaning up junk stock and buying blue chip, he wanted him trading in derivatives. And most of those trades, surprisingly, led to huge losses, but built up large frothy volumes on which the brokerage firm was earning a lot of fees. Now, Mohandas's continuation in his job and income came from the fees that the brokerage firm earned. So a man who had never traded more than 5 lakh a year, 5 lakh worth a year, was suddenly trading derivatives to the tune of 1.3 crores in just two months. And what did he have to show for it? 255 rupees credited to his account as earnings. No explanations for what happened. And this is only derivatives, okay? The total trades that were done in his account were worth 6.25 crore. Now, Mohandas ensured technical compliance with SEBI rules. 
this is the key point that you have to remember that they know what they are doing they know what the sebi rules are so they quietly luring you into making sure that it, it appears to be your fault if things go wrong so margin ledger statements emails sms everything was done in line with sebi want what sebi needs and unsuspecting pestinji was tutored so they know there are call recordings so there would be a call pestinji would be told in advance what to say and he would say yes or no or place an order he didn't understand what is the meaning of those calls being recorded by the broker pretty soon he was selling even his core portfolio to meet his debits all this happened like i said during the lockdown pestinji finally realized that he had been badly duped and taken for a complete ride he filed complaints he probably consulted his family filed complaints with the cyber crime division of the police and with nsc's grievance redress committee which is called the grc for the rest of this video expectedly the broker's representative was fully prepared the brokers have teams including lawyers to stand and defend this because they know it goes to the grievance redress committee and they are fully prepared to argue and show how the person traded with full knowledge and because he has lost money he is now trying to blame someone else at the grc hearing it produced a letter which pestinji had written in november 2021 where he had unconditionally withdrawn the police complaint so their point was this man is withdrawing it he has no complaints so what are we arguing about before the grc the letter interestingly was signed by two family members of pestinji now behind this is an act which is so brazen as to be amazing mohan das was dealing with pestinji alone but the brokerage firm because it has control over your accounts had the temerity to freeze the dmat accounts of the two family members so all three members accounts were frozen almost like what banks have been doing when they suspend or freeze our accounts just for want of kf kyc these are private brokers even if they were brokers belonging to banks or public sector banks they are brokers they have no right to suspend anybody's account least of all a family member but they got away with doing it and they did it knowing full well that grievance redress in india almost doesn't work and fighting filing litigation means more costs and maybe 10 15 years at which your core lifelong savings which sebi has pushed us all to put into a dmat account and lose control over it this is important you know because when there was paper trading we would keep it in our safes or in bank lockers sebi now wants it dematted and allows a broker to freeze it i mean i don't even know whether this has been taken up in the right way but le- listen to the story so the brokerage firm freezes the account the family members probably decide that it's not worth the fight they give an unconditional letter to have their accounts unfrozen broker produces the letter before the grc and says look there's nothing wrong the grc very luckily for pestinji shot saw through the charade it asked for call recordings only 14 recordings for 100 plus trades were produced of which 11 related to orders placed very clearly mohan das had initiated all but three calls the recordings also showed that pestinji was placing orders as tutored by mohan das because when he was placing an order he wasn't even talking about the price at which the order should be placed so mohan das was happily placing the orders at market price CRC also accepted Pestinji's contention that he signed the unconditional withdrawal under duress because his family accounts were frozen. It ruled in his favor. The amount in this case was tiny, 6.13 lakhs, but it tells you what kind of role a broker can play. The next story is truly chilling. It's a horror story, and it should serve as a warning to anyone who has multiple family accounts with one brokerage firm. lot of times we are not paying attention to what senior citizens and super senior citizens are doing so here's the story the victim is a very very unusual feisty 80 year old lady i'm going to call her shanta limay she has worked all her life brought up her children used to trade in equities including doing derivatives trading over the last 6 or 7 years small amounts of it during the lockdown she 
was lured by her broker to trade more and more. She racked up trading losses of nearly 8 crores in derivatives against a collateral of just 2 crores. So first flag, how on earth did this broker, and this is important, this broker is a very, very large listed company with lots of complaints. I'm not going to name them because it's not relevant to the story and the lesson over here. So two crores of collateral allows her to rack up losses of eight crores. Then her trading facility is revoked and the broker obviously will take the loss because the lady has no money. This is when a series of illegalities begin because the broker had violated SEBI guidelines and then indulges in a criminal cover up to make up this loss of over seven crores, which otherwise the firm would have to write off. What does he do? extends a line of credit to Shanta Limay at 15.25%. Now remember this 82 year old woman doesn't check her repayment capacity, source of income obviously has a plan. What is this plan? It's pure fraud. So Shanta Limay happened to have a son, we are going to call him Dr. Arjun Limay. He and his wife had a DMAT account in the same firm in which they had parked very valuable ESOPs which were worth over 8 crores. This couple lives in the US, seldom trades, their mother lived in Bombay. There's a third account held by Dr. Lumay jointly with his sister and mother, which was set up in 2007. Their mother used to trade, trade derivatives. The family knew that she trades. Now, the mother had no idea of what is the value of shares in her son's DMAT account. Everybody has to keep even their ESOPs in a DMAT account because if you need to liquidate them, you can't do it unless it's dematerialized. The brokerage firm illegally and quietly linked the son's joint account with his wife to the third account with the mother and the sister. How can they do it without their consent or authorization? They cooked up some documents. The broker employee also then, not then, actually when everything blew up. So the broker continues to get the mother to keep trading in that third account when she can't pay, when the losses increase, he sells all the shares or a big chunk of shares, only worth five crores from the son's account. These shares are sold, the money would go into the account that is linked to the son's DMAT. That bank account was different from the one which was with the, the third account with the mother, sister, and Dr. Limay. So, what did this uh, broker employee do? He sold the shares and credited it to the third joint account. Why? Because he says he uses the term family account. Now remember, none of this would have come into the public domain. The shares were sold, the money was shifted. In the process, he quietly had asked the mother to change the mobile number so that no SMS messages went to the doctor in the US when shares were being sold out of his account. They were going to the email, but the doctor just assumed that mails since he had not traded at all and there were emails coming for the third joint account which he, his sister and mother had, he assumed those were trades that his mother was doing and wasn't paying attention to them. So he didn't check his email. He did not get SMS messages about his account which would have alerted him. He didn't get any bank debit in his account which would have alerted him because the broker fraudulently put it in the third account. Now all this suddenly came to a head when Dr. Arjun Limay realized that he had virtually been cleaned out. Out of 8 crores, over 5 crores had just gone. That's when he filed a complaint, went before the GRC and all these things came out. The mother had no idea. She thought she was trading on a line of credit. She wasn't. Obviously, there may be cognitive issues over here because you're talking about an 80 year old and a very smooth talking person who was confusing her between this account and that. There were three accounts and she obviously didn't know finally what was happening. Remember, during a lockdown, 82 year old lady staying alone and with all this confusion and not able to deal with it. Finally, when the matter went before the GRC, the broker had the temerity to talk about family accounts. It's important to know that there is no concept called family accounts under SEBI rules. You cannot do it. You cannot move things at will when there is a separate bank account with a joint account between a husband and a wife. You can't transfer that money to a third account claiming it's a default account. So the third account was opened in 2007. 
The broker calls it a default account. There is no such concept under SEBI rules. He says all of them were linked with a bunch of documents. They were unsigned. In fact, at a time when he claimed the documents were signed, Dr. Lumet and his wife were abroad. There's no question of signing. The joint account that Dr. Lumet has is with his wife. His mother is not a party to it. So any time anything had to be moved out of that account and not credited to that bank account, the wife's signature would be required. That was not okay. All of this was just clear fraud. And separately, the mother had traded and lost about 1.7 crore between the period April 21 to Jan 2022. At one time, Dr. Arjun Lemay decided that let me just pay off her losses and close things. So it sent a message, not knowing that his own account had been looted. So looking at just the mother's account, wanted to help her and sent a message saying, let's find a way to close this and I will pay it. The broker misuses this communication to pretend that Dr. Arjun Lemay knew everything. When Arjun Lemay was accessing his account, online to check what the hell was happening in his account. The broker brings that in also saying he was secretly looking at the account. He wasn't, he was looking at it after he had been looted. Again, the CRP saw all this, asked for call recordings. It asked for details about the family account, looked at the signatures. It was frankly nothing short of highway robbery. To cut a long story short, here's what happened. Instead of sacking this errant employee who had the temerity to cook up all this, the brokerage firm actually defends this employee because it will do anything to avoid the loss. While it may sack the employee, it has to take the loss. Instead, easier to blame an investor, especially an investor who is living in the US, who may not have the ability, knowledge or wherewithal to fight. Luckily, Dr. Lime is MBA. He was able to fight it. You want to know what kind of trades happened in the account of this 82-year-old lady? 2,000 derivatives trades worth a mind-boggling 340 crores only between April 2020, just after the lockdown, to March 2021, leading to a loss of 2 crore. A few call recordings that were shown during the GRP process showed that she kept talking about 1,000 to 2,000 trades in her call. Was her consent sought for everything? Because on a particular day when she's talking about trading 1,000 or 2,000 trades, the number of trades were in excess of 24,000. This was inconsistent even with her usual trading and again smacks of inducement or outright fraud. It should have raised an alarm. Clearly the brokers are not concerned. The listed entities just as the exchange wants to show higher turnover and higher profits, each of these listed brokers could care less what happens as long as there is more and more brokerage income. Scary aspect of this story is that the mother was so fully under the influence of this broker employee. She thought that at every stage he was trying to help her. He was giving her a line of credit. He was trying to help her recover her losses. She was signing things thinking that it was all to help her, not realizing that she was facilitating the loot from her own son's account. So overall, over 4.9 crore worth of shares were first removed from Dr. Arjun Lima's account. It reduced his mother's liability from 8 crore to 3 crore. During the hearing, the broker justified illegal credit proceedings, like I said, the default account, which is not permitted, and total loss the end of the day, and I'm cutting all the details out because they're not relevant, was 8.75 crore. Like I said before, this, this story and the one on Piston G shows that brokers will back any illegal operation, forgery, fraud, theft, as long as their brokerage income increases. The extent of the swindle can actually be investigated only by SEBI. Because what can the GRP do? It can uphold the complaint and rule in favor of these investors as has happened in both these cases. They are positive. Remember, for these two positive cases, there will be eight for every 10 cases where two go in favor of investors, many more go against them because people don't even know how to prepare the documentation, how to present their cases because on the opposite side are well-informed lawyers who know every rule. And when you've been lured, when Every step of the way, the person who is cheating you knows how to circumvent the rules. 
making your case is difficult. Who can do anything about it? SEBI can. SEBI has the power to interrogate, search, seize and punish the broker. And unless there is exemplary punishment so that the broker, the first sign of alarm pulls up the employee because he doesn't want to face a huge problem or get suspended, only then will things change and people will stop cheating. For these two investors, it may go into arbitration if the broker continues to fight. If SEBI wakes up, these are large cases, so it is going to be escalated by NSC to SEBI. If SEBI wakes up and looks at it, SEBI can stop their harassment right here and punish the broker. I keep repeating that if these large brokers are not punished with exemplary damages, nothing is going to change. Will SEBI act? Well, in the past 20 years, no SEBI chairman has even stirred himself to act on behalf of investors. We have some hopes this time. Let's see it works. If you agree, just circulate this video to anyone you know who's trading because people ought to know what's going on in the market. Thank you.